I brought my friends today, Gracie. <laughs> Look at the posse behind you. What's up, chefs? <laughs> yeah, they, I call them art. <laughs> How are you, neighbors? Yeah, it looks like you should be in the Oval Office. I love the uh, the look, the uh, control, the uh, yeah. I got this. And fire, uh, fire, <laughs> no more war. <laughs> I'm signing papers. I'm doing documents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. Well, great to see you. Same here. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure seeing you, Thank and always you. so much fun being. Well, that we're on the phone, on your podcast, and today video. Yeah, it's going to be great. Hey, listen, before we get started, um, well, if we've already started, doesn't matter. I still want to take this. To. So, uh, so my partner and I we watched a Netflix show called The Queen's Gambit, and I seen that. Yeah, it's lovely. It's it's like it's like nine nine. Uh, nine episodes all in one season it ends after the first season so you don't have to keep waiting and waiting and waiting it's nice. really good the queen's gambit it is really 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 good so i, I was you know i was a little hesitant about that but i'm glad because i was like is this going to be boring no so you know what no, if you're no. suggesting it i'm going to watch it and it's you know how intense. i can binge watch yeah i know how you can binge watch absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. It's all good. So listen, my friend, we are going to be talking all about you. Oh. And in fact, I want to touch on so that other people can learn about what's behind you, that backdrop you have, this okay. chef tutorial. No, chef tutorials, not chef. Tutorial. Okay, yeah, look at me see, butchering see. it. Chef. Uh, oh, just a sec now. <laughs> chef. Tutorial. Tutorial. Yes. And and the guys that are smiling behind you. <laughs> and the guys that are smiling. They're, they're like, peeping over your shoulders. <laughs> they got me covered. They got me covered because I'm not a chef. I'm a chef pimp. That's the way they, <laughs> they look after me. <laughs> Notice I'm not wearing the uh, the coat. I don't they have a chef coat. that now. money for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have an amazing, amazing concept behind that. And one of the reasons why you and I became such awesome friends in such mm -hmm. a short period of time was that we have the same mindset. We mm -hmm. are true entrepreneurs at heart. And when you were sharing, we were sharing, um, and I hate using this word because people use it out of content, but we were sharing pivoting. I love the word. Yeah, it's it. About how we were pivoting with COVID. But you and I pivot different. We pivot the right way. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't crazy. pivot into it's, things that we don't know. Right, yeah. It was just a, a different alignment. You know what's crazy? Is that no one ever says to the players in the NBA, I'm tired of you using the word pivot. But for some reason, as entrepreneurs, <laughs> oh, I'm tired of that word. Okay, if you're tired of the word, then tell the guys in the NBA and your son's basketball coach i hate that word stop using that word they don't do it stop using that pivot word stop using that pivot word yeah I you're hate not that pivoting because no, it makes sense it's totally it's totally appropriate so i love the word it is bang on bang on bang on. there you so go we're, there we're you gonna go. use it we're gonna use there, it and celebrate it there you go pivoting it is pivot yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the word up there. Pivot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pivot, pivot, so pivot, people, pivot, pivot. Tell people about um, your program that you came up with. It's amazing. I even signed up for it. You gave me a yeah, courtesy. Yeah, you did. You're gonna be my enrolled. guest next week. So really, you know, uh, Gracie, I've been um, I've been uh, in the chef talent agency business, hanging out with amazing men and women and their culinary uh, genius in bringing food to life. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I, I always say that, that chefs are great scientists, but they're also great artists. And they're yeah. able to bring those two disciplines together in a way that is really, really magical. So 
I started a company over 20 years ago, which was a chef talent agency. And uh, it was all about finding opportunities for these amazing, incredible people from a freelance perspective, get them out from behind the kitchen, from behind the doors and let their light shine. And, um, And I'm the furthest thing from a chef you'll ever find, but I'm an entrepreneur. And so over the 20 plus years, that's what we did. We found opportunities primarily in, 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 in uh, kind of live, in-person, educating, working primarily with businesses who wanted to educate their clients, who wanted to entertain their clients, who wanted to connect with their clients uh, with, the, with business objectives. COVID came along and um, actually one of our favorite clients was and still is uh, Canada's second largest grocery chain uh, oh. and working with their clients as an example of that. Wow. And, you know, we work with, we work with wine companies and, and so on, all bringing that whole element of culinary experience to life from a primarily a business perspective. COVID came along and says, no, you're not going to do that anymore, Rivers. Matter of fact, you're not only going to do it, I'm going to take it away from you. Bull and- crap. <laughs> yeah, gone. Just gone. You know, 22 years of this stuff. And it's like, whoa, what do I do now? So, but I'm an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. You get that. You say, well, we're punched in the nose every day. What <laughs> you know, so oh, what? Global here, pandemic. Here. Yeah. Here. Here. <laughs> and we end up looking good, don't we? Look right. at us. We still end up looking good. And uh, you know, so okay, now you're throwing a global pandemic at me. Well, okay, no big deal. I'm going to take the the model and I'm going to bring it online where I'm going to keep those talents going, but we're just going to deliver it through a virtual experience, primarily working with the virtual events world, uh, the world that is really looking for a food and beverage experience, not yeah. just presentations and so on. And so, yeah, we found a space working with the uh, corporate uh, virtual events, fundraising, virtual events, awesome. um, team building, virtual events by having people become engaged with the chef and rolling up their sleeves, putting the apron on and building a meal with the chef uh, based on the program that they happen to be a participant in. So think of, think of 10 virtual kitchens all hanging out with these amazing, with this amazing chef, actually building a meal and asking questions, learning about knife skills, uh, bringing in a sommelier. So really bringing that culinary experience virtually in a way that, heck, I can do this around the world now, where before it was purely in the geographic region I was in, in Canada. So, so that's, that's how I pivoted. That's pivoting. That's, yeah. that's yeah, how so. you pivot. You took your existing business and you said, I'm not going to let you stop me from doing this in person. Just going to go virtual with it. And you did it in such a clever and tasteful way too. Thank you. It's amazing. You know, I I am one of your biggest cheerleaders. Yeah, you are. Yeah. And you're coming next week to participate in in, in a chef tutorial as part of our BR guest program. So I can't wait to see you there for all kinds of reasons. One is I love (laughs) hanging out with you. Who knows? I might wear one of my girls, my wigs, and ah, give it a different okay. look. Okay, right, well, that's cool. That works. <laughs> it's like this is Gracie, or, yeah. or should I say Luann? This is Lu- Luann. Luann, I love it. Luann. <laughs> well, my, you know, it's interesting. My partner loves wearing hair extensions and so on. So she would so love to meet you. That is so cool. <laughs> there you go. Well, then you know what? That's it. Is done. I'm wearing a wig. Okay, for cool. That's a girl. Big. Cool. T- I keep calling it tutorial. You know yeah. what? Don't shoot me. <laughs> okay. Chef tutorial. See, just Chef a sec. We were going to do, remember? We were going to do. Chef tutorial. I'm tutorial. looking. And you know, I don't have my glasses on. That's probably why I should be wearing them. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I don't like wearing glasses. Well, actually, we were talking about, that's a, one of the first things we talked about. Weren't you supposed to go get new glasses or something last time I talked? Oh my about? God. So, okay, everybody, here it is. Mm. Rivers is exposing it all. So I not only went to see my eye doctor, but they want me to wear three different types of glasses. So believe it or not, I'm wearing contacts and I still have to wear. Oh, come on. Yes. And then I have to get glasses from far distance and then glasses for when I'm on a computer. So yeah, that's that's three pairs of glasses I'm going to have to wear. It's the price of getting older. 
Yeah. Well, I, I like the fact you said older, by the way, because you're definitely not old. There's a lot of old 30 year olds out there. So, uh, yeah, no, no, it's definitely older, but that's all right. It is what it is. And yeah, it is what it is. What am I going to do? Huh? Yeah, it's, I it's can't nice cry. To... What's the point of crying? It's not going to not gonna work it. for me. Not gonna, <laughs> and, well, particularly don't cry now because then the people are going to think, well, what did he do to make her cry? And then it's coming back on me. You never yeah. make me cry. You, you do the opposite. You make me laugh. <laughs> Nice. So listen, <laughs> yes. I absolutely love this concept. I love the fact that you brought it into a virtual world. I'm hoping that even after we like overcome this corona situation, the economy picks up, that yeah. throwing is out there, you know, Rivers. I hope mm. that you keep the virtual component while getting back into the in-person. Mm. Booyah! Yeah. You'll be making some money, dropping the coins, point, point, point. <laughs> it's a great song. What's that song by Jennifer uh, Lopez? It's De Niro or something like that. She's got a beautiful song that she's going to the bank go with Fred <laughs> with with the uh, Benjamin Franco. <laughs> it's a great song. But yeah, you know, definitely I will actually because because part of my philosophy, one of my one of my dreams in life, and I'm working towards this, is to work uh -huh. anywhere, anytime. And of course, the virtual yeah. environment allows us to do that in such a magical way. So so yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely there. It'll be virtual. It may pivot in a bit of how the type of experiences we bring into play. Maybe it's a hybrid, but I'll always have a virtual component. I consider COVID to be one of the greatest blessings business-wise that's ever, ever happened to me. I don't know what it is for you. I do too. I totally yeah. agree with you. And you know, you and I have talked about that several times and the reasons why we both feel as though it was a blessing in the long run. Um, it's, there's so many ways to look at that as a blessing. And one of the main ways is opportunity. You're there's right. opportunities to, to advance and expose our brand even right. greater than what we were doing before. Right. Now you said that you are not even a chef, but you've no. been in this ring for 20 something years. Yeah. Tell me, why did you get into it? How did you get into it? Well, you know, first of all, I just want to touch on something. This is a great question and I always appreciate it. But I, what I love about COVID did, it actually caused me to then put a strategy on reaching out to people on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which connected me to you, yeah. which now I have a great new friend, a great new colleague, but then opportunity goes from there. So, you know, just that reference point is about, well, where does it take you? It took me to you where it probably would not have. Uh, yeah. if we hadn't had this. So, so yeah, you know, I, I think the thing that uh, the answer to the question is, is that I'm a, I'm a brand guy. I love my philosophy. Uh, I live by a simple philosophy of life that you zag when everybody else zigs. And, um, <laughs> and when you do that, you know, you'll go down routes that are so, so, so cool. So around the time that I discovered this idea, I was reading a magazine, uh, it was an entrepreneur magazine. And, the, mm -hmm. and one of the articles was on new business ideas. And they interviewed this lawyer from the city of Toronto here in Canada. And she said, you know, we have people come into our homes to clean our homes. Why don't we have chefs to come in and cook our meals, busy households and all that kind of stuff. Ah. And I'm a brand guy. I'm a unique idea guy. And at the time, I knew a very good chef uh, who was trained at the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. And he wasn't a business guy. Well, I was a business guy. And so, you know, we took those two talents and came together and we started to build out this model. And it just took off because it was such a novel idea. It wasn't starting a restaurant. It wasn't starting a catering business. It was starting a brand. And uh, so that's that's how You're it all started. Mary. You're yeah. a visionary. That's what you are. Yeah, well, it worked out great. You know, and I saw so many, you know, it was around the time the Food Network network was really getting traction. So, and so there was a lot of these high level chefs like Emeril and, uh, and Jamie Oliver and so on of the world. And, but there wasn't, there still was these amazing talents for, I'll call them the A rated chefs, not the triple A, because they, they just didn't have the notoriety. But to me, just as talented. And so that's what we did. We brought their talents out into the marketplace and it just, kept on going, kept on going. And I've met some most amazing people 
uh, because of this journey. And so, wow. yeah, I, I'm a zagger is what I do. That's I'm what I, a, do. I, I find it very remarkable because just the excitement of being able to say, Ooh, my chef is from here, yeah. from, Spain, from all yeah. over the place. You don't have a chef like that. And That's even right. though it's virtual, Hey, I got him in my kitchen virtually yep. teaching me how to make this. Right. I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I am a food person. I'm a foodie. Yes. And I love the idea of socializing and gathering around food. And what mm. better way to do that than to do it in the kitchen, even yes. if it is your own kitchen and be able to have a group of friends. Um, I already mentioned earlier to you that I am one of your biggest fans on a friendship <laughs> level and as a yes. um, fellow entrepreneur. So yes. I'm on a big mission on getting you plugged in where I can for a couple of gigs that's on the table. I don't oh, know if wonderful. I shared this with you or not, but I have been pitching you. I pitched you once wow. already. And I um, I got a couple of things on the pipeline for 21. And wow. I am patient. That is going to be great. Oh my God, are you kidding me? I am patiently waiting for the right opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about what their visions are for their needs mm -hmm. and how I can ease you in. <laughs> Love it. Well, you know, it's, it's great to have this conversation now, Gracie, because even though you, you ask, okay, so how do you keep going? You know, what's the excitement piece? And, and I am now delivering a culinary experience online with these mm -hmm. chefs. But now what I've started to do is dial it up a bit for people like you who love to dial it. So one of the examples, so I'm now building a program as an example with uh -huh. a chef who is a chef on mega yachts for the rich and famous. And so she's going to bring in her stories of what it's like to be in that environment that most people don't get exposed to in addition to cooking <laughs> some of the meals that these people cook. So it's those backgrounds, a chef that cooks in a submarine is another one that we're going to work with. And so- Oh my God, this is fantastic. But Rivers, you do realize that kind of is a segue into, are we networking or interviewing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always, I'm always, always looking for business. Gracie, you that, let it, you let it here. I know, that's who we are. <laughs> that's why you and I get along so well. Yeah. We're always thinking. Yes. That that's a nice segue into my other business, which is the opulent lifestyle. We yes. chartered yachts. There you go. There you go. So, so, so that's this is this, we need to talk about further too behind the scenes. We do. We we really do because I need to be aligned. See, this is great, um, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know who's watching this or who's going to watch it, but this is a prime example. You know, I I was asked many years ago, Rivers, how do you market your business? And I said, I opened my mouth. Yeah. And it's so true. I mean, look at, you know, we just keep talking and talking and just because we know, we think we know what we're doing. I mean, there's things that happened in your life in the last two weeks. I don't know about, and yeah. maybe there's a way I can help you with your life because I just keep talking. And so prime example here, you open your mouth and you never know what's going to happen. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk about that for sure, because I need somebody to help me deliver that model. I can get the experience, but how do you wrap it around something that's really cool? And so opportunity for collaboration. Love it. Yeah. I want to put this little pitch out there. This is a great opportunity for all of our listeners and readers that are in the yacht industry, the uh, luxury real estate industry, the luxury vehicle industry, you all are surrounded by the clientele that can benefit from my friend Rivers services and having a chef in your kitchen, having a chef virtually visit you, having a chef on your yacht and your private event that you're hosting, whether it's in the country or around the world. Yeah. Contact me and Rivers. Yeah. So Rivers, the other thing I want to talk to you about okay. is your podcast show. Tell yes. me about that. I was a yeah. guest there. It was freaking amazing. Yeah, we had a ton of fun, didn't we? Had, yeah. Hands down, the best interview I've ever had since I've yeah. ever been interviewed in eight years. We but had, um, we, I want to know... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. 
I don't see this is my natural thing. I want to take over now. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. This is your show, it's not mine. Sorry. <laughs> well, I just want you to share with them. I know about it, but I want yeah. people to learn more about you. Share about your podcast show and how you come to having that show and why. Yeah, thank you, Gracie. Well, you know, I'm a believer that uh, God's gift to me is my talent and my gift to God is what I do with my talent. And my talent is to be able to serve entrepreneurs in a way that helps them be successful. And in that regard, I've done many things. Uh, I was the, uh, w- uh, the first entrepreneur in residence hired by a government agency in Canada. Um, I uh, have helped start Canada's largest organization to serve entrepreneurs. And I don't say that to brag. I say that to say I love serving entrepreneurs and helping them be successful. And so one of the ways in which I did that, I started my podcast uh, called Headspace for Entrepreneurs. We also have a private Facebook group, uh, Triple W. I want to join your Facebook group. Yeah, well, join it. It's well, easy. Please, You're please, in please. h4e.co. H number four e.co. Headspace for entrepreneurs. Okay. And, I'm um, join. Yeah. Headspace for entrepreneurs. H4e.co. Yeah, of course you're going to join. I love it. And it's because we need rock stars like you in there engaging in conversations. <laughs> yeah. I got a question for you now, just a second. I'm going to hold that because you pulled the little guitar mode on me. So uh, and so Headspace for Entrepreneurs podcast is a way in which one, like you're doing, I can help entrepreneurs tell their story mm. through my connections, through my uh, uh, interviews, but also I can teach a bunch of entrepreneurs because they're going to learn from other entrepreneurs that are mm-hmm. going through journeys also. And so all of that is servitude for me. You know, I, I love doing that just like you love serving also and, uh, but serving in a way that's, that, that you're passionate about how or who you're serving and how you're serving. So that's uh, yeah, that's all about it. The uh, headspace for entrepreneurs, the podcast, you'll get all the information when you sign up for headspace for entrepreneurs, the, uh, the private Facebook uh, group, which has entrepreneurs from around the planet. It's very cool. Well, you know, I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with tooting your own, your horn. Right. There's not, you're right. It's your resume. Right. And I had to step out of the comfort zone of feeling like, ugh, and my bragging and my boosting and bragging. Mm. No, because we, we do forget. We tend to forget all the wonderful things that we've done. Mm. And it's important to share mm-hmm. your resume of what you've done, what you've accomplished and why you're where you're at. Because it also, in my opinion, shows credibility for you mm. to be the person that I should be listening to with whatever it is that you're sharing and telling us yeah. about. And so, so, I mean, yep. you're the type of person I'm looking at, whoa, you did some pretty impressive things. How did you get there? And what, oh my yeah. God, you did that. Okay. So I think this person do know what he's talking about when I listen to him or listen to his podcast. So no, bravo it. to you. Thanks. I think that's fantastic. And, and you do have the credentials in my eyes from experience and other things that you've done to be talking to the audience of entrepreneurs. Thanks. Really good. Yep. In fact, it's somebody, a, like somebody reached out to me because of your um, interview with me. Oh, lovely. Oh, I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. That makes me, that makes me smile. Yeah. You, you know, Gracie, it's it, someone once sent to me, it ain't bragging if it's true rivers. And so if it's part of your resume, like you said, it is what it is. And, you know, if you had your children here, you would brag all over the place about them. So why not do, why not show them how it's done and share the wonderful things you've done too. So yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that call out on that. Yeah. I'm very proud of it, uh, about what I've been able to done, been able to done, been able to do. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> but, uh, day. <laughs> yeah. It's a good day though. It's so, it's such a good day. Such a good day. They're all good days. No, I, I, I definitely um, agree with that. It, it's um, or I strongly feel about that. It's important to share your resume. And, and, and like you said, how do you market your business? You open up your mouth. Open how, my mouth. How do you market who you are and that you're a credible person for what you're, you know, for what you're saying to people, your messaging that you're putting out there? You mm. open your mouth and you, t- and you share. You yes. share with your journey what it was all mm. about. People are not going to 
and trust anything that I have to say about events and raising funds and all that kind of stuff, unless they know my story. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So, Very cool. How about to you? Yeah. So this guy who reached out to me, I have yet to respond to him yet. I've been very, very, very busy. Gracie but, Jones, um, busy is not an excuse. You know that. <laughs> if I said to you, oh, Gracie, sorry, I've been busy. You would so slap me on that. Don't give me that. That's no excuse. It's a bad excuse. No, I know, but it's the truth. <laughs> it may not be a good excuse, but it's the truth. But I am going to respond to him. I promise good. you, it's on my list. I'm going to All check right. it off. And All I'm right. going to take it off with the red ink. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> but yeah, how funny Perfect. is this? The person that saw the um, uh, listen to your radio, your podcast interview of me, yes, with someone who's from Pennsylvania. Oh, so cool! And cool. it wasn't through LinkedIn. Apparently, from my understanding, he literally was. He's he must be a a member of your audience for your podcast. Cool, that is so, so cool. How yeah, awesome I think, is that? Yeah, that's, it's so awesome because for, 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 for a lot of reasons, one, it's nice to know that someone's listening to the podcast <laughs> <laughs> and two, it's nice that uh, they, they, uh, they, they uh, saw some or connected with some value off of that, Yeah, which is exactly what I wanted from the podcast is like for other people to get value. And, uh, and, and so that's, yeah, that, that makes me really happy to hear that. So yeah. all it takes is one. Imagine if you could just change the life of one person, how many lives you could subsequently change oh because God. of helping one person. It's just crazy. That's eh? why we do what we do, you yeah. and I, yeah. is that we yeah. are trying to make a difference and we're making, we're trying to make a difference through the power of, uh, that exists in us. And that yes. is our entrepreneur mindset, conducting the business, building and conducting the business that we do Yep. and the way yep. and the fashion that we're doing it. Because the end user is going, we're coming up with solutions for them. That's why right. we that's why we're supposed to be into business, right? right. Is to have problems. solutions, yes, mm -hmm. for what people's needs and wants are. And you hit it. I just it just hit me. <laughs> you hit it right on the nail when you said the reason why you started <laughs> the chef tutorial yes. <laughs> project was because of what you read in a magazine. Yeah, yeah. The fact that the woman said, why can't we have people that come in our house and clean for us? Why can't we have them come and cook for us? And you went, aha. That's right. Now I see that there's a problem. There's a problem. And now I'm going to create a solution. And it was so easy. So yeah. easy to do it. And, but again, I'm, I'm, I, what, what was cool about this journey, I didn't say it, I didn't give you the re this before, so I don't know why I said it again, but uh -huh. what's important is that I knew the lane I played. So even though I was playing in the culinary world, I yeah. knew I wasn't a culinary expert. So I stayed out of that, being responsible for that area of the business and was able to bring in the expertise to uh, to be able to support. I stayed in the lane that I was good at. I'm a big right. uh, I'm I'm a big New England Patriots fan and I always like to say, you know, Tom Brady didn't play defense. He stayed in his lane to play <laughs> yeah. offense. And uh, it takes two takes defense and offense to make the game go, but that's he right. still stayed in the lane. And so uh, that's uh, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because it's uh, uh, that was a pretty, pretty important part of the success of our journey is I didn't get involved in an area I knew nothing about, nor had any interest in. So why bother right. playing that game? It, it was definitely a great pairing up because like you said, he was talented in cooking that chef mm. and mm. he was not great. He understood his strengths and he understood his weaknesses yep. and he really wasn't interested in focusing on the business aspect of it. So you guys pairing out was perfect. It worked great. Yeah, it worked wow. great. What kind of advice do you have out there for people that are entrepreneurs during these days and times? We've been facing a whole lot now. Mm. Although you're in Canada, right, and you're not experiencing what is going on in my country, the U.S., but right. there is a a huge impact globally 
yes. for all of us with the racism, COVID-19, the economy, mm -hmm. all of, mm -hmm. we're getting slammed left and yeah. right. What kind of word of wisdom do you have for people out there looking yes. to start their business or to keep their business? Yeah, well, I, uh, this is not going to be what people are going to expect when I, when I give this answer, but this is probably one of the greatest times in your life as an entrepreneur that's beginning your journey uh, or has might have been struggling before because it's causing us all to think differently. And yeah. when I say all of us, I mean all of us, big business, medium-sized business, small businesses. So we are all starting from the same starting line during this time period. doesn't matter if you've had 40 years experience or whatever, you still have to do something different to maintain your business. Tons of big businesses that have been gone, gone out of business because they just haven't done that. So I, I, you know, I, th I think if you need to take a look at COVID as a, as a great blessing, as hard as it is, it's a huge opportunity for us as entrepreneurs because yeah. we are heading in that direction. And here's the other reason why it's a huge opportunity. And I, and I, and I alluded to it is that there's only going to be about 20% of us that are actually going to move fast through this in the beginning, because the other ones are going right. to be frozen. I can't, you know, I, I work in the events world and there's so many people that I talk to are saying, Oh, I'm just going to wait. I'm waiting for it to go back to normal and it ain't going to go back to normal. And that train is so, going to pass you right by. Bye bye. It ain't going to happen. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that um, uh, it, it is embraced virtual. This is, a, this is a weird story, but I was on another networking call and this guy was so happy. He had just, it, it, during, it, COVID was on. And he had just got a, like an $80,000 loan or line of credit or something. And he says, this is great. I'm going to go buy a truck and then I'm going to do, do, you know, buy some tools and so on. And I'm like, dude, there's a global pandemic on. <laughs> You're not allowed to go into these places. You can have the beautiful truck you want, but you can't. So go virtual, get online. Right. It's, it's the place to go. I couldn't believe it. He's all excited. Like, he's just going to blow your bit money because you're cut. You're not able to serve your customers because of the restrictions. And so, you know, virtual is, is afforded me the luxury. I can now work around the world where before I was stuck in Eastern Canada because mm -hmm. of the geographic restrictions on my business model. Not so, anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm down in Pennsylvania, it. baby. That's <laughs> right. I'm hanging out with the people in Pennsylvania and it's so cool. So, you know, that's the other one. And the third thing is, is do not follow the crowd. You know, yes. you're going to see people who are going to say, oh, you should do it this way. You should do it this way. You should do this way. You don't follow the crowd. Your business model is very wide on servitude, but the way you build your business and work your business is not what everybody else is doing. You take the road not taken in a very competitive space. And so therefore you stand out because of that. So zag, zag when everybody else is zigging. Do not do what everybody else is doing virtually in your industry figure out a way to do it a little bit more unique because just like at school, when you were going through high school, the weird kid in school always got talked about. Well, yeah. that's good in business. The that's weird, great. the different, the out of the box gets talked about and you can also charge more because you're different and yeah. not like everybody else. So those would be some, some initial words of wisdom I would give to uh, give to entrepreneurs. Awesome. And, and you know what, um, to, you know, to add to some of the things that you shared in that advice, yes. one, money does crazy things to people. That guy turned around, he was like ready to spin, 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 because he got approved mm. for a ton of money. And yep. the program and our head tells yep. us to go out and spend it. I got the money. Now I need to spend it. And that's not what you should do. No. As an that's entrepreneur, a... you have to be smart about everything you're doing, but you can't be so tight on everything that you're not being a risk taker and making decisions. You right. just just can't go out there and just blow all that money. The next thing you know, where did the money go? Oh my God. Go. I had quick. 80 grand. Yes. So, you know, through. that was great that you said to him, why are you buying a truck and tools? when didn't make any sense to me yeah it doesn't make any sense right go now test it first. Yeah, hold go that test money it yes. yeah put because some of that system, money in marketing 
You're right. The system, by the, the system, by the way, wants you to spend that money. They yes. want you to go put it out. The government banks want you to go put it out of the marketplace. So, so one, it stimulates the activity of other businesses, but then also when you run out, they want you to come back for, for some more. And exactly. so uh, now all of a sudden they own part of your business because you're going to leverage your business to get the yep. loan. Yeah. Gracie, she's bang on with that. Be smart with your money. It's, it's no different than what you would tell your kids to do. So why yeah. would you do something you wouldn't tell your kids to do? It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. He should put that in marketing pivot to mm -hmm. going virtual and then have that money available for as things progress. Right. You know, and to 21, 22, whatever the case may be, where it's going to take his business from that point forward. Right. And on. Stuff, but don't right just on. go spend it all right now and you don't have the customers to bring the revenue back in with right. the money that you have for investing into yourself. Exactly. No, I, I agree 100%. 100%. Um, I have a fun fact question for you. I <laughs> oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. I love this. Okay, I'm ready. So, you want one or two? You know what? Let's do two for you, okay? Okay, okay. All right, so first I want you to tell me your most favorite okay. holiday. It doesn't matter what time of the year. Okay. And okay. it doesn't matter at what point in time in your life. Yep. Um, you have this memory, but share with us your yep. favorite holiday and why. So is it, is it a, is it a official holiday or like uh, Christmas as an example, or is it a special day that I like to say, uh, that's a cool day for me. Oh, cool. Let's go with whatever you want. Okay. This so I'm going to, I'm going to answer. So I'm going to, I'm going to answer my, my favorite holiday is uh, very similar to what a, probably a lot of holiday, you know, the, uh, what, what similar holiday to Americans are. I am a very proud Canadian and on uh -huh. July the 1st, every year there's Canada day and I love Canada day. It's in the middle of summer, you know, Canadians are coming out and uh, really celebrating the great country that we live in and all the wonderful things that go with it amongst all the muck, but it still is a great holiday for all kinds of reasons like uh, that. Now my favorite day of the year is my birthday. And so, Gracie, don't forget it. It's March 25th. Every year, March 25th. Wait, March? <laughs> you said every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every year is my birthday. March 25th. I, it, it, you want to make me ugly, particularly my family. Do not forget my birthday. Forget me at Christmas. Forget me at Valentine's. Forget me at Thanksgiving. Don't, you know, don't invite me to the, to the nieces and nephews' uh, uh, christenings. Don't care don't forget my birthday. And so I love my birthday. I don't know why, but it's, uh, it's just something special, but Canada day is the holiday that I love. Really? Love, love. really? You're yeah, I, would, I was uh, actually one, one time I was with a group of Canadians down at a, an event in the United States uh -huh. and, and they celebrate, it was Canada day. We were there and I got up in front of the crowd and I said, you know, I said, you know, that the reason you have a 4th of July is because Canada had this big party on July the 1st to celebrate their national. And he said, the guy was there, was an American. So he came down to back home and he said, we got to do what they do. And then, and then what happened? Your Thanksgiving is always after our Thanksgiving. Same thing. We had really? somebody from America. Yep. Yeah. And it said somebody from the United States came up to Canada in October <laughs> and said, whoa, this is kind of cool. Brought the idea down to, uh, you Who know, knows? it was probably me. Hey guys, you know what Canada is doing? I'm That's a planner. Right. We got to take. We need to be doing it here. You want to party? Party! <laughs> oh my gosh! So what was funny about it? And then I say, then then the Americans, you guys caught up caught up to us at Christmas time. But oh my gosh, it was so funny the story because I, I mean I, uh, I we were just talking. We had a big crowd, and they were anyway. There was these two Americans in the front. They did not find that funny at all. 99.9% .9 of the rest of them did, but these two, no, they wouldn't even, they, they wouldn't even stand up. We went, we, we did that because it was on Canada Day. They wouldn't even stand uh -huh. up for the Canadian national anthem. Well, that's um, because they were that crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was just stupid. Just stupid. Anyway, I laugh, but, uh, but yeah, July 1st, my friend, is Canada Day. It's my favorite holiday of the year. Our awesome. Man. You want question number two? Oh, yeah, of course. I love this game. All right, cool. So, are, do you celebrate Halloween in Canada? Yep. All right. Yep. 
but it's I, not a holiday. You, it's a it's it's a deal. It's a yeah. It's a it's a you know. It's just an an event day. Oh, okay. Do yeah. you personally celebrate it too? I'm not a big Halloween guy. Oh no. No. Mm -hmm. Well, Is that your question. Yeah, forget it. Squash it. I was <laughs> going to ask you a question pertaining to that, but let's do this. What's your favorite dish? Oh my God, you're funny. Let me scratch that. Yeah, what a party pooper that guy. He doesn't even celebrate Halloween. Wet towel. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. Close the door. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights and uh, hire a security guard to keep the kids away from the door. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. What was your question? My favorite dish. My yeah. favorite. My favorite dish is a dessert, and it's creme brulee. But it's not a regular creme brulee. It's a lemon creme brulee. Ooh, even yeah. more so. I love lemon love flavored dishes. Love it, love it, love it. Oh my God, really? That's my, that's my favorite dish. And my favorite appetizer is escargot and garlic Ugh. butter. <laughs> butter and snail. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. And then my main favorite dish is uh, I love lobster. I'm from the, uh, I'm from the Atlantic coast. And uh, our lobster is the best in the entire world. Really? Uh, yeah, so I love lobster. Love it. I love have it. a special request. Okay. And I will pay to, of course, to um, participate with your program. If you have one of your chefs do a dish with your favorite dessert, which is the lemon flavor uh, brulee. Yeah. And yeah. then... Um, lobster now here's the thing here's the thing though for me yeah. i i like lobster but i don't like lobster the way your average person does because i don't like care it. for okay. butter okay and okay. my way of enjoying lobster is the the latin culture way of making it they create this red sauce and they put the lobster in it and they okay. cook the lobster in that just like you would boil it in water red yeah meat. yeah yeah, yeah, they put and it in the sauce. So it is cooked in a sauce and it's so amazingly delicious. What's and the sauce that way like? I don't I don't have to worry about um dipping it in butter or anything like that. And I don't have to worry about it being bland because it's just boiled and then you dip it in water. Yeah. And so, so can you put those on the menu and let yes, me know of course and I'll I can. sign up for it? Of course I can. Yes, of course I can. Remember, I don't do any of the work. I just bring it to the chef. So I would say, <laughs> yep, you can do it. And she's a VIP times 4 billion. So you're going to make that happen. That's, That's so right. cool. Because I was going to there and eat it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I was in Australia once and uh, for New Year's Eve and we were all at a golf uh, um, course and and anyway, I ordered lobster. And then I said to the waiter, I said, can I get it in a little jar, a little bowl of melted butter? And the, uh -huh. entire t and the entire table is kind of looking at me. They had never heard of dipping lobster in butter in Australia. Really? Yeah. And it's like, whoa. Anyway, they were all trying it and they, they all liked it. So really? go, figure, right? go figure. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm not a, a fan of butter and mayonnaise. Um, yeah, now I do cook with these ingredients um, because my mother taught me as a young child, two things, never cook for your own taste. You, you're cooking for other people, so you mm. cannot put your preference into the mill. Mm. And then two, the same thing with driving. So I'm only 5'2 right. um, in height. And when I first learned how to drive, my we had this old car where in order to move the driver's seat up, the driver and the passenger seat had to go up together at the same time. I remember those. I remember those. And marriages. she used to make me keep the seat so far back while learning how to drive. I said, my toes are barely touching it. She said, well, what if you had a man in the car that was six feet tall? You expect him to sit like this with his knees up here to his chest? And I said, but, 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 she says, drive, figure it out. I'm like, okay. Oh, <laughs> and how tall is your husband? I learned how to drive that way. <laughs> how tall is your husband? Um, Almost six feet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Six years right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is too funny. You know, hey, but at the end of the day, I don't have the, I don't have those cars that takes the whole front seat up with you. So <laughs> well, you don't. Well, and he well, makes fun of me though, Rivers. He goes, you drive so close to the steering wheel. I said, because I couldn't <laughs> when I was younger. 
Well, you know, my, my lady, she's, she's five feet. And, uh, oh, she's so cute and petite. Yeah, she's just uh, she's a small, uh, good things in small package too. And anyway, she was she was on the counter painting the wall behind one of the cupboards, and she was just standing straight up, and her head was just touching the ceiling. And I was thinking, you know, anybody else has got to go like this, right? And she's just standing right up, straight as anything. So there's advantages to being petite. Oh my God, thank you. Rivers, <laughs> thank you so much for being here with me. That's how I think we went over. Let's take a did. look. Yes, we did. Of course we but, did. <laughs> <laughs> We're but rule breakers, I enjoyed Gracie. it. I enjoyed thank it you. so much. I'm go don't go anywhere. Thanks okay. guys for being with us today. Read up on the Q&A for Rivers. Learn a little bit more about him, his companies and his businesses. And maybe you too can be a podcast guest on his yes, show. Do it. Talk to you soon.